Hey there, it's Cassie. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm making a couple birthday cards. I wanted to do something with some of this Nouveau Mousse that I had. So I had an idea of, you know, doing some ink blending and using stencils and making a couple birthday cards. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing. I have some cans and XL watercolor paper and I'm using some Vivas blending brushes. They're actually makeup brushes. I've talked about them before. Uh, but these work great and they were only like nine bucks on Amazon, so not going to complain about that. And I am just blending on some distress inks, not distress oxide, but the regular distress inks. And this is the color Spiced Marmalade. Love that name. I don't know why, I just think it's, I love it. And then I am grabbing some Wild Honey and I am doing that mostly in the center. I want it to be a little bit darker in the center and I had radiated out that spiced marmalade all along the edges. Now I am moving on to some pinks. Now I didn't clean off my brush very well and I'm like oh this isn't working so great. It looks more orangey. Um, I had grabbed spun sugar to start and because I wanted a light pink at least I thought I did and so once I got my brush cleaned off a little bit better I spread that color out. Um, obviously it's a little orange but it's okay. And I decided it was too light and I wasn't happy. So I grabbed some worn lipstick. I was originally going with lighter thinking that it would be better for that Nouveau Mousse that I have up there that you can see. But I think I like the darker on this better. So this is the worn lipstick and I'm doing that same thing, just radiating out from the center and getting it lighter towards the edges. These brushes are so good for getting that light blend at the end. And then for the center, for the darker color, I'm grabbing Festive Berries. And I love how that turned out. So I'll blend that out, make sure that it's good and blended. And then we'll move on to the next step, which would be splatter. So if you don't know much about Distress Inks, they have this amazing ability to react with water. And so I'm just sprinkling on some water. You can't see it there until I pull off my cloth. Isn't that awesome? Ugh. I just love that. So I'm heating that in between and I'm realizing I want a little bit more splatter because I do plan to, like I said, use a stencil with some of that Nouveau Mousse and it'll cover some of that up. So I'm splattering some more. Again, can't see it. And then I will wipe that up and it's gorgeous. So I heat set that again. For my next step, I am using the My Favorite Things Radiating Rays stencil and I'm just taping, just using a little bit of washi tape on the back to make sure that that stencil stays in place. I am using a plastic palette knife. These are one of the Ranger palette knives and I'm opening that up. This is the um, Nouveau Mousse in the color, it's the Nouveau Embellishment Mousse and this is custard cream and it spreads like butter. I'm telling you, this stuff is so cool. And I want it to be kind of messy. I don't want it to go all the way to the edges. I just want it to be messy. I didn't want to completely cover up that beautiful background that I had just sponged. So um, I'm just wiping that on, spreading it like I'm spreading butter on toast or something, which is now making me hungry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I will close that up and put that lid on really tight so that it doesn't dry out. And look at how pretty that is. So I went and cleaned off my stencil and now I'm going to do this over the pink one using the color Pink Flambe. And this one spreads the same way. And this is obviously a much darker color, so I tried to be a little sparing with this. I didn't want it to be too intense, but in the end, I love the intensity of that color. It's so pretty. And this stuff doesn't really take much time at all to dry which is part of the reason why you need to make sure that you keep your foil cover for your mousses and also when you close up that lid, close it up nice and tight so that no air is trapped in there too much. And then I'll peel that off and let those dry. I'll set those off to the side to dry. And now I'll work on my stamping. So my images come from the My Favorite Things stamp set that was just recently released called Birth Yay. These images are so cute. It's all these little um, rainforest type creatures like a well not that a rhino's in a rainforest but <laughs> um you know just some cute little animals a rhino a monkey a turtle and a toucan and uh, i stamped them out twice because i will you know obviously i'm making two of the same so i will only show you the coloring of the one 
I am starting off with some W1, and someone had asked me to talk about my shading a little bit. Uh, I, I have said this before. I like to start from lightest to darkest, and I believe that shading is a, a layering process. So I started off with a base coat of that W1, and now I'm putting shading just where I think it, I, it would be. There is really no rhyme or reason, and it's probably wrong. <laughs> Um, if you know you we're gonna be honest here so I spread some of that W3 and then I am putting the lightest amount of W5 on there then I will move on back to my W3 to blend that W5 out a little bit so it's not so harsh and then I'll grab my W1 once again and using a flicking motion bring that out as well so that my sweet little Rhino is shaded at least how I think he should be shaded so then I'll move on to the monkey. And I don't think I used the greatest colors here. I mean, they're pretty, but I should have used more contrasting colors because these images are quite small. Using three colors on some of these smaller images is just almost impossible. So I am using, I started off with E13 and for my darker shade, I'm using E99. Personally, like I said, I don't think I shaded or I used dramatic enough colors. And one of the things about Copics that's nice is that once they dry, you can go back over them again with the same color. So I'm trying to use the E13 over the E13 that I previously put down, and it does leave a little bit of shading. It's just not very dramatic. And I'm doing the same thing with the E99. So I wish that I had chosen some more dramatic colors. Now I'll move on to the turtle after I put R11 on that little monkey's cheeks, which you really can't see. Once again, like I said, I wish I had gone a little bit more dramatic. I am starting off with BG18 for his shell, and I'm just going to color right over those spots because I do plan to use a white gel pen to go back over them. And then I'm using BG78 as my darker color for his shell. And I'm just putting in shadowing, like I said, where I think it might be. These aren't realistic images, obviously, and this isn't like a realistic scene, so you put it in wherever you want. The the idea is mostly just to, you know, trick the eye into thinking that there's some light and dark shades. So I started off with G85 for his lighter color and then went on to G94 for the little body of the turtle. I am using T5, which is just basically a neutral, and T7 for my darker. And it's at this point I'm looking at these colors that I've chosen and they're not very vibrant, but I did choose some more vibrant colors for everything, all the little accessories, which makes the images pop. So for the balloon, I'm using BG05 for my base. And then I am moving on to using B06 for my darker color. And with rounded images, I, if you've noticed, I don't tend to go all the way to the edge with that to give it that rounded effect. My yellow is Oof. I don't remember because I didn't put the cap down. Obviously, I just got into mode there. I believe it was Y15 and Y38. And then for my pinks, I'm using RV06. And this is where it really starts to pop with that pink. I love that little pop of pink in there. And RV66 for some shading. Now my little toucan is super colorful. And then I'll blend that out, and then I'll just go ahead and use the R11 that I used on the monkey's cheeks for the little cherry on top. And then I colored the other one the exact same. So here's where I grab the white gel pen, and I put in a few little highlights where I think they might be. I don't tend to, like some people, they love to put in a bunch of highlights. I don't really like to do that. And it's personal preference, honestly. I feel like with too many highlights, some of the images can look a little bit like balloon characters. And, um, and it's cute, but I just, it's personal preference. So I am tacking down the coordinating die. This is one time where I did get a coordinating die. And I am sticking that through my Sizzix Sidekick. You all know I can't live without that thing. And I keep my dies on those little magnets there that I cut down. Those are the Marietta magnets. I've talked about those before as well. And then I just keep those with their packaging. I'm going to use the My Favorite Things inside out stitched rectangle stacks and trim down both of those panels that I made. Those didn't take any time to dry. 
And now I'm stamping out the sentiments onto some black cardstock that I just have in my stash with some Versamark ink. And then I will cover those with some white embossing powder. I did, which you don't see, I did go over the top of this with an embossing bag to cut down on the static so that the white embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it. And I'm also just making a mess with embossing powder now. <laughs> you can see I'm spreading it everywhere. So now I will just heat that until it is smooth and melted with my heat gun. And then I will trim those down when they are cooled. Moving on to my card bases, I'm using some My Favorite Things Grout Gray cardstock. I just thought this was a really pretty neutral color. And I have taped that down to my radiating rays stencil once again. I want those rays to look like they are radiating past uh, the panel that I made with the other ink blending. So I'm using some old paper distress ink and I am just blending that onto this cardstock, just going a little bit further than the panel that's going to go on top of it. And it's interesting because it doesn't look very dark here, and then you peel that away and it's, it's very vibrant. These blending brushes are wonderful, make it so easy. And I love how that looks. It's subtle, but it's great. So now I have taken the time to cover everything with Scotch foam tape except my sentiments. I've decided I'm not going to do my sentiments like that. So those panels had the foam tape on them and now which e with each of the sentiments I'm just going to trim each of those ends down to a flag banner and you do that by snipping right into the center about however far you want to go and then making those ends meet to the center just like that and I'll do it to both of them and then we can start assembling our cards. I love that bold black sentiment and it looks like the little uh, it will look like the little characters are standing on top of them so I'll go ahead and peel off the backing paper on my pink panel as well and stick that down to that grout gray card base and then I'll start assembling that I'll peel off all the backing paper that's on my little animals you know you don't even think about it but boy it does take some time to put all that foam tape on the back of those <laughs> and then I will stick that down and then I'm actually just going to use a little bit of liquid glue on the back of my sentiment strip and make it look like they're standing on the sentiment strip. And I'll do the same thing with the yellow. And for a final bit of embellishment on both of those, I am going to use some sequins. I grabbed these Studio Katia Sunny Side Up 6mm sequins that I had in my stash. And I'm using my Crystal Katana along with some liquid glue to adhere these all over that background. I like to stick some of those sequins down and kind of like tucked underneath things. I just think it adds a little bit of, I don't know, extra dimension and I think it's fun. And then I'll move on to the other, the pink one, and those are the Simon Says Stamp Groovy Sequins. I love how they're all different colors and they are a flat back with no hole in the center. So they're really just pretty. I could have gone with a regular pink because I do have plenty of pink sequins, but I just thought this added extra color to a really fun, colorful card. And that will finish off these two cards. So I'd love to know what you think. Um, go ahead and leave a comment down below if you'd like. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And as always, thank you guys for stopping by.